Now let's, uh, you can, uh, this is a St. Ignatius song. This is a Jesuit song on page 26. I can't help it. That song is on the new Song of the Lamb CD, and the Fill Me With Your Love is on the everlasting, the new Everlasting Covenant CD. Out of God's infinite glory, he says in Ephesians, may God give you power through his spirit for your hidden selves to grow strong, so that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. And then planted in love and built on love, you will, with all the saints, have the strength to grasp the breadth and length, the height and the depth, until knowing the love of Christ, which is beyond all knowledge, you are filled with utter fullness, which is God, who wants you to be filled with the utter fullness of who he made you to be. That's all he cares about. It's so sweet. But look at Paul's spirituality. He says in 2 Corinthians, I've been sent to prison, more often whipped so many times, more often almost to death. Five times I had the 39 lashes from the Jews. Three times I've been beaten with sticks. Once I was stoned. Three times I have been shipwrecked and once adrift in the open sea for a night and a day, in danger from rivers and in danger from brigands. I have been hungry and thirsty and often starving. I have been in the cold without clothes. So, my sisters and brothers, in 2 Corinthians, Paul says, I shall be very happy to make my weakness my special boast, so that the power of Christ may stay over me, and that is why I am quite content with my weakness and with the insults and hardships and persecutions and the agonies I go through for the one I love. Paul proclaims his weakness. And in Philippians 2, he says, we are God's work of art. And he comes so that he says, so I shall be very happy to make my weakness my special boast. I glory in my weakness because when I am weak, I am strong. And what does he mean by weakness? He means 
that he's come to the end of his rope about any creative ability to have any qualitative change in the situation the, he is in. Paul has come to the end of the line about having any creative ability to have any kind, to implement any kind of change in the situation he finds himself in. That's what weakness is. Weakness is, I'm at the end of my rope. And he says, I glory in that. Because in that experience, power of Christ wells up within me. That's the spirituality of St. Paul. And John of the Cross, the poet who wrote a 26-line poem called The Dark Night, and then proceeded to write 800 pages to explain it, <laughs> which is not exactly what I would call a poet, but, you know, He's a doctor of the church. What he brings in is this notion of darkness. He says this in his poem, The Dark Night of the Soul. One dark night, fired with love's urgent longings. Ah, the sheer grace. I went out unseen, my house now being all stilled. In darkness and secure by the secret ladder Disguised, ah, the sheer grace, in darkness and concealment, my house now being all still. Oh, that glad night. In secret, no one saw me, nor did I look for anything with no other light or guide than the one that burned in my heart. And he goes on in the poem, The Living Flame, to talk about that. Oh, living flame of love, how tenderly wounds my soul in its deepest center. Since now you are not oppressive, now consummate, if it be your will. Tear through the veil of this sweet encounter. O oh, delightful wound, O oh, gentle hand, O oh, delicate touch. The tastes of eternal life. Woo! It's beautiful. What's it all about? Very simply, if after this talk you said, you know, I really want to follow Christ, so I'm going to move down to a total poor area of my city, I'm going to give up my job, and I know there's a drugstore that has a room above it, I'm going to move into that room. And so you do, because you want to follow Christ and you want to do something. It's great. So you go to bed, and it's pretty cold, and all of a sudden at 2 in the morning, and the light in the drugstore is going on and off into your window, and cars are going by, and finally somebody throws a huge beer bottle onto the street, and you wake up at 2 in the morning, and then you put your toesies down on the bed, and it's linoleum. Oh, and the linoleum is cold, and it's not your rug, you know? It's not the rug. And so you get up to make some hot chocolate. <laughs> so you can go back to sleep, but there is no hot chocolate. There's a little thing with some ice water. And then there's a big fight outside and you can't get back to sleep for three hours? John of the Cross would say, what you're used to is gone. It's darkness for what you were used to. Darkness. When there's darkness in the habits of your body, you go to a deeper ability and you hold on to it. But then, as John talks about, he says, even there can be darkness in our intellect where we can't remember, or darkness in our memory where we can't remember. We have to just go on will sometimes. I remember. I'm married.
marry my spouse. <laughs> Get out that book and look at those pictures. I can't believe it. Why did I ever do that? You go back to a deeper, and sometimes even your memory, you have to go on faith alone. So your memory's darkened. That's what he means by darkness. But he says it was a glad night. It was a night more lovely than the dawn because of the love of Christ that began to emerge from within him. Have you ever experienced a sense of being far from God, even though you wanted to serve God? And what was it like for you? Have you experienced a sense that your affliction will never end? What does it mean that God does this in order to give everything back to us with a general freedom towards it all? And that's what John says. He says, wait, let's make this clear. The movement of God is not to take anything away from us. We're like, <clears throat> the only reason, what God never takes anything away from us without giving it back, but not like this, <clears throat> like this, with the gentleness towards what it is, whether it's a person a situation, instead of <clears throat> even with ourselves, that's what God wants. Flowing out through the pores of our skin, not <clears throat> so. What is God working for in us all the time? What does God want? St. Paul and St. John have similarities. The weakness in St. Paul is similar to darkness in St. John. The condition of total impotence, impotence and inability of one's own human power to affect any qualitative change. In his, I cannot make my spouse do that. I can't make the bishop do it. Or my mother's superior community. They won't change community night. <laughs> you and I are not in charge of what things mean. And what I'd like to say is that the discovery of the unconscious and all the methodologies surround it are better methodologies than we've had in the history of Christian ascetical theology. As I have told people, and I mean it sincerely, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there 40 years ago, this is a real mystery. I'm here to tell you, there are no mysteries in this. You want to get to the bottom of it, we can do it. Is it hard? You bet your life. But there are no mysteries here. We will find out what the pain is. Because the pain is beautiful. I know you don't like it. I don't like it. But the only problem is when we suppress one feeling, we suppress them all. And so we don't think we suppress all our feelings. But just, just try someone you really love who just insulted you. And they come walking down. Instead of going, hey, how are you? You go, hey. Hi. What happened to your love? It is imprisoned. That's only a small example. God does not want us imprisoned because being who we are, coming out through the pores of our skin, is prayer. Because some Jesuit way back in 2005 told you, no. Because Jesus Christ is in charge of what prayer and holiness is. Not you and not me. And every move we make to free ourselves so that we can say who we are and share it with our sisters and brothers, it's prayer and holiness. 
Because Jesus said, when you give to these sisters and brothers of mine, you give to me. And that's where Christ is in every single situation, in every single organic person, in every single contact, in every single relationship, trying to bring you to be gently to who you've always wanted to be. And it has to be over and over and over. That's what mortification is. That's what abnegation is. That's what penance is. We'd love to say it's giving up candy. <laughs> but uh, but I, 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 hey, I'm, I'm not making a joke about giving up candy. It's a big deal. But at the same time, this is qualitatively more painful. So what is the meaning of holiness for you? The lifting up of your heart and mind. So... My sisters and brothers, is your struggle to love the same struggle that Jesus lived out in his life? Do you recognize that only in God you can fully relate to yourself and to others? And how does God reach to your very being? And so we live in a community, the church, that wants us to reflect on ourselves Thank God we live in a church that says every day I confess to Almighty God that I have sinned through my faith. That this is okay in our group. Thanks be to God. So, let's sing one final hymn, number 27. Blessing Prayer. This is in the Shadow of My Wings songbook. And I'd be happy to meet and talk with you at the signing booth after this. This is number 27. We're going to sing verse 1, 2, and 6.
Thank you.